Okay, for those of you who have a Prius and have a battery uh, check engine light that came on and you want to try to rebuild your battery, there's not a whole lot of videos out there, at least not ones that don't want to charge you money. This one I don't want any money for, obviously. But um, when you get the battery out of the car, there's other videos to do that. I figure it's kind of straightforward and simple. It took me about 45 minutes to get the, uh, get the battery out of the car. Once you get the battery out of the car, you get the cover off from it, this is what you have. You've got uh, individual cells and it's all DC. Again, this is high voltage stuff. I'm supposed to warn people not to, you know, if you're not comfortable dealing with high voltage electricity, don't do this. But, you know, if you're confident and you know how electricity works, then you shouldn't have a problem. It's actually very, very simple. But you just get yourself a multimeter if you don't already have one. If you don't have one, maybe you don't even want to be doing this. But if you have a multimeter, take it, run the tester leads. You can see there's there's positive and negative demarcations on all the batteries. And they wired them in a series. So what you do is just kind of run through. I, the way I did it is I just ran through with a tester, testing the ends all the way down. And flipped them, did the op opposite side, so that way I can just keep the leads all on the same side. You know, double checked. I went through twice just to make sure, and then I found my bad cell. It was the voltage was lower than the rest of the cells in the pack, and I marked it. And that was the only one that I found that was different. And the Prius I bought, I you know, they figured it was shot. And I think most dealerships say they want thirty-three hundred dollars for a new battery pack. Here I've ordered one on the internet to replace the bad cell. Waited three days for it to get here. Thirty-seven dollars. If you search Prius cell, you'll be able to find them. There's different, different ones for first gen, second gen, stuff like that. So, when you're searching it, just make sure. If you have any questions, ask the seller. You know, you don't want to buy the wrong, the wrong battery. But when you look here, you'll notice on the bottom, there's threads. On uh, the one end, the other end's open. So those. I left it in the pack. I see a lot of people take stuff out of the pack. The I I just went and felt underneath here, took the screw out, which was a nice eight millimeter bolt right here. Took the leads off right here, and then if you can see these little plastic connectors are tied together. So I don't feel like taking all these nuts and bolts off to get this one big plastic strip off to get this one cell. I'm not gonna sell the car, I'm probably gonna drive it till it dies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that little plastic tab off right here and just pull this off. And then on the back side, they have the, <clears throat> on the back side of the battery, I'm just going to leave these intact and hopefully slide it out that way. We'll see here in a minute because I'm going to try it for the first time. But you can see they have the um, voltage for the, for the computer. You have your voltage lines that checks each pair of each pair of cells that way your computer knows when you have a, a a bad cell it will read back and you'll get your check engine light on and I'm buying the car brand new so I don't know how it normally runs but I got 46 miles a gallon highway all the way back from it's it's almost a 200 mile drive so with one bad cell I wasn't getting terrible mileage but I, I don't know what the car is typically gonna get because I like I said, I bought it this way. You know, the dealer, I guess he was scared or whatever, but I got a smoking good deal in the car, and hopefully it's going to be a, a $40 fix, and I'll be back on the road. So let me get some parts apart, and I'll see you back in a second. Okay, so now you see I pulled the, the bad cell out, which is the one I marked, and I actually ended up, instead of just taking this bolt on the bottom here, I kind of took this whole block off. It was easier to move because they got these... Uh, little barbs on the side to kind of keep these batteries all locked together in a unit so uh, I took the took the whole piece out and just unbolted the extra ones in the bottom and that made it easy again I left this side the plastic intact and I'm just going to slide the other battery back in position and then bolt everything back up and it should be pretty simple okay here we have it back installed we got the bat the new battery tied back in with everything else the connections remade and I went and put the screws all back in the bottom, which is cart. I got it down. It's kind of nice because I can actually reach my hand underneath the bottom. I don't have to hold it up on its side to get at those. We got these nutted back on. And I just took note that just like on your car battery, 
you've got your positive and your negative leads well your negative leads all have a little bit of corrosion on them well this one's backwards because I put it on backwards but all your negative leads have the corrosion on them you know same way your car battery that's your the the acids in the batteries evaporating causing that these evaporation tubes are supposed to drain out of the car but that little bit of corrosion on the on the terminal leads are telling me that these things aren't super duper efficient they probably do lose a little bit of vapor but I just took note in case I'm ever tearing things apart you know if it's different and if you're doing your own you have a question if it's normal well as far as I'm concerned it's normal but if you don't have it and I do maybe mine's screwed so anyways just thought I'd point that out and I'm gonna put all these covers back on these are just little rubber 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 things that go on the barb fittings and again when you're working on battery be careful voltage obviously you're you're not gonna have a problem just touching the local stuff here but if you touch this one and you go across the other side you touch the other side you are asking for 220 volts of electric or DC current to be zapping through you but as long as you're only touching with one hand I think you can I saw somebody else's page you can only reach 90 volts of current through your hand which most people I don't think would bother them too much but maybe some people are sensitive to electric but anyways if you're not safe comfortable working with electricity by all means don't do this but it's pretty basic pretty simple simple hand tools voltage meter you'll be able to you'll be able to rebuild the battery pack in a Prius and also I wanted to know I don't know if I said this earlier but the the computers a lot of people kinda say their computers could be faulty so they um, will say that the you know this is your this is your computer for your battery you can also buy these on eBay for you know 50 60 bucks I almost thought about buying one figure I'm ripping it apart what's it hurt to swap out the uh, the EC, ECU and put a new one in but I was thinking uh, if the battery if the computer doesn't work the car isn't gonna start car starts car runs fine this works fine so if it was not doing anything the computers dead if you can't start your car if you got you know a dead car your computer could very well likely be the the culprit they also have the uh, the cooling tunnels for these things go underneath and above and they have a cooling fan that sits back by the battery in the car and if your cooling fan is plugged up with dog hair or whatnot there's no filter on the cooling fans so they say if the cooling fan gets gummed up your battery could also fail because of overheating you know they want to keep these temperatures low enough that they're they're not gonna uh, cook the battery and, and and get too hot so your cooling fan is also something you want to look at when you tear it apart mine has my, the car I bought has 130,000 miles on it cooling fan is actually in tip-top shape there's there's a little dust on the fins but not too bad and the car did look like they had you know dog food stuck in the back seats kids toys and everything else so the car's been uh, the car's definitely been used in those 130,000 miles